the country Ghana was thrown in course between 2018 to 2022 because of the gruesome murder of four kidnapped girls in Takoradi. The people of Takoradi took this murder to another level to make sure that the murderers were found and they punished. This led to so many protests in Ghana that it was like Ghana was about to have a war against the government because of this murder. In this video, we are going to see how these four Takoradi girls were murdered, what caused the cause or the protests in Ghana, and all you need to know about the murder of these Takoradi girls in Ghana. Welcome to True Crime Media. If this is your first time of coming across our page, kindly subscribe so that anytime I publish a new video, you will be able to see it and watch. Now that you have subscribed or follow our page, relax. Let's look into this gruesome murder case of the four Takoradi girls in Ghana. Takoradi is a city in Ghana comprising the twin cities of Sekondi and the Takoradi. It is the capital of Sekondi Takoradi Metropolitan District and the western region of Ghana. Takoradi is the region's largest city as well as an industrial and commercial center with a population of 104,847 people according to the 2021 census in Ghana. Leading industries in the city are timber, cocoa processing, plywood, shipbuilding, its harbor, and the railway repair, and recently, sweet crude oil and the crude oil. The fundamental job in Sekondi Takoradi is fishing. Takoradi lies on the main railway lines to Kumasi. In this beautiful city of Takoradi, leaves Ruth Abaka, our first victim. Ruth Abaka was kidnapped on 29 July 2018 near the Bena Methodist Church where she goes to worship God. After the family of Ruth Abaka waited for her return till late in the night and couldn't see her, they searched and searched everywhere they could from neighbors to neighbors' houses, friends to friends, even present and past colleagues of hers. But they were unable to see Ruth Abaka. Soon after, they started calling her on phone. The neighbors, friends, everyone that were informed of her missing tried reaching her on phone, but they couldn't get her because her phone was not reachable. Soon after, the community organized a search party to cover more ground. They searched everywhere they could, but couldn't found Ruth Abaka. The next day came, and there were no signs of her return. Then, as they were waiting for her return, as they were searching, then came the call that broke the camel's back. The call that turned the situation around, and that's the phone call from her adopters. According to Ruth Abaka's sister, the kidnappers called, demanding for a some amount of money before they could release her, as they assured them that she's still alive. On the 30th of July 2018, a day after her disappearance, the kidnappers also 
called the mother of fruit Habaka, demanding for a ransom before they released her. They followed up with a death message, one of which was sent on December 6, 2018, which read, Your daughter is safe. You better pay so she can come back home. The second victim, Priscilla Blessing, was kidnapped on the 17th of August, 2018, in a town called Cancer World in Takoradi. Soon after her kidnapping on 17th of August, 2018, the kidnappers called her parents demanding for a ransom. The family of Priscilla Blessing raised the money and paid to the kidnappers to see their daughter back home. After paying $650 to the kidnappers as demanded, these kidnappers later demanded an additional ransom of $81 for her release, which was paid. Soon after the $81 were paid, the kidnappers switched off their phones, and this will be the last time her parents or anyone will hear anything about this girl. The third victim, Ruth Love, left home on December 4th, 2018, around 9.30 a.m. in the morning to go to MTN office for job recruitment. Later that day, she called her mother crying for help. She was crying and begging her mother because some people covered her face and took her to unknown place. And they are demanding for $81 before they will release her. The kidnappers later that day called the family demanding $1,630 before they could release her. And they instructed that the amount should be paid in the victim's phone. Thus, they should use mobile money to make this payment. On hearing this heavy request, the family reported to the telecommunication company for the phone number the kidnappers called to be traced. The telecommunication company said no to this request because they had to come with a formal police request before they can be able to track the number. The family immediately went to Takoradi Central Police Station to report the missing person. But they were told in the police station that they had one missing person resolved case, so they should go to the next police station. Soon after, the kidnappers will call the parents to send 60 US dollars that the victim is sick. After, they will call again demanding money, and the family sent another 16 dollars. That's after they have sent the 60 US dollars. But when the kidnappers insisted that they should pay the 1,630 US dollars ransom, the family had to play smart this time around. They called on the Bureau of National Investigation and they reported the case. Our fourth victim is Priscilla. She got kidnapped on December 21st, 2018 at Nkorofo Junction. After a series of payments to these kidnappers by the victim's parents, the Bureau of National Investigation was able to pinpoint their location and this led to the arrest of an old student of Takoradi Technical University. Later, they realized that he was not connected to the kidnappers, so he was released. Within the second week of kidnapping, another $81 was sent to the kidnappers, but this time around, with the help of the police and the Bureau of National Investigation. And this led to the first arrest of one of the suspects, who goes by the name Sam Waves, a Nigerian. He was arrested on December 22, 2018, 
in connection of the kidnapping of the Takoradi girls. Barely eight days after his arrest, he escaped from the police custody on 30th of December 2018. A prison break. And this prison break forced the entire community to take matters into their own hands. The second suspect, John Oji, a Nigerian OXO, will be arrested on June 12, 2019, on his way to Togo, while on the run of what he committed in Ghana. The people of Takoradi was not happy that the first suspect should escape from prison. The question and answer the people of Takoradi keep asking is who helped him escape from the prison or how was he able to escape without anyone on guard noticing? The answers to the questions was left unanswered and this led to so many revolution and protests in the city of Takoradi by the victims parents and the entire community of Takoradi. Barely a day after the suspect escape, the entire community of Takoradi demanded an investigation and answers from the officers on duty why the suspect escaped. According to them, he didn't just escape. Who helped him? They wanted to know. They needed an answer to know why this suspect should escape from prison because he, he, he would not just escape like that. Someone helped him to escape. So this caused serious problem in Ghana then. We are 100% convinced that if this incident happened to one of the minister or happened to any dignitary in our country by now, I am convinced that we will see them. We are dedicating this press conference to the, the president of Ghana, which is Nana Adodankwa Ekufu. Ado. Uh, what I will say is that we are already disappointed the way they are handle our sister issue. Because we all know that in Ghana here, our leaders treat foreigners special. So I don't know why uh, they are wasting time on my sister issue. So we are very disappointed and we are warning the government. We are just telling him that we are the citizen here. So at the end of the day, we will vote. So he should be very careful the way he's handled the issue. You know, we are very disappointed. Days later, Samuel was rearrested at his hideout at Kansawororo. So after the revolution, after the protests, the police fought very well and they tried. Thank God they succeeded in rearresting this victim. During the rearrest of some weeks, the police was able to discover some clothes which was believed to be that of the last girl, that's Priscilla, that was missing. After the rearrest, he told the police that Sam Wills now told police that he was helped by one CID and the one resident in Takoradi who goes by the name Kwesi. Then the police had their investigation, the escape of Sam Wills from prison. But the outcome to fish out this CID and the guy Kwesi was not made known to the public. And because the result of the investigation that the police carried out was not made known to the public if the CID was arrested or not, this also caused a serious demonstration and agitation from the entire community of Takoradi. The families of the kidnapped girls and the entire Takoradi cried out so loud and demonstrated against the police delay in prosecuting the CID and also the delay in finding the missing girls. We, we, are, we are not seeing anything because for you to come here five minutes the agenda case to 18 it's like they are joking and me I, I will say it again if you don't see my sister by the close of this week seriously we will, we will strike on the 2nd of april 2019 the cid assured the families of the missing girls that the police knows the whereabouts of the missing girls and this was the only good news from the disappearance of this girl since 2018. The question was, where were they found? Are the girls still alive? Or the truth will later be that the police lied to the people. This is serious. The police lied to the people. Why should the police lie to the people? Do they have hands in the kidnap or in the kidnapping of these girls? Anyway, continue to watch the video. Let's see what really happened. 
the truth is this the police didn't find the girls they just said this they just cook up that story to calm the situation down because ghana as a whole was hot then but instead of this to calm down the situation it added more fuel to the existing fire we call madame tiwa and she told my mom that we should keep on playing they, they are still on it but for her to come out this morning telling us that they had found the case and they are doing like we don't understand the story no answer me home but they say i did the mommy then i saw so no but i say i'm calling over here the scenario on for my brain if in this case whereby the kids are not in your custody as you said you found them then you just come out to make this public announcement then in a way you are informing the kidnappers to escape with the kids to different place another bigger demonstration came up from the whole community in takoradi even the entire ghana the whole people of takoradi stormed the cid headquarters demanding the whereabouts of their girls due to the incompetence of the cid in this matter the entire community of Takoradi and Ghana as a whole pleaded to the government to sack the CID. But instead, the government of Ghana promoted the CID instead. All along, they've been telling us that the girls are alive and they are, that they are doing all what they can to bring them back to us. So all of a sudden, they came to... We even heard it on the news before the police. Hey, hey. This again threw the whole Ghana upside down. The demonstration was tripled. On the 2nd of August 2019, the whole Ghana came to a standstill. The search stopped. The most shocking news was given. A special police operation led to the discovery of the four missing girls at Takoradi. The first three bodies were discovered in a septic tank behind the uncompleted house where some wheels had been living. The fourth body was found few meters away from where he kept the first three bodies. The remains of the girls were taken to a forensic lab for a DNA test. In September 2019, the police after the forensic audit confirmed the remains are that of the kidnapped girls in Takoradi. The remains of the girls are still in the custody of the police because the police had earlier told the families that they had found the girls and they are doing well that's they are still alive even after the dna was confirmed positive the families didn't believe and are still in hopeful that their daughter will return home safely and in good health one day on the 5th of march 2021 the Sakondi High Court, presided by Justice Frank Pong Richard, sentenced to death two kidnappers and murderers, Sam Wills and John Oji. Even after their judgments, the families and the entire community still have doubts if these kidnappers will be killed as they were sentenced. So, what's your take on this one? What do you think about the government in this matter? We, who is to be blamed here? The government or the families or the communities? Are so serious in Ghana again. If you have not subscribed or follow my page, do well to do so. So that anytime I upload a new video, you will be able to see it and watch. Remember on this page, I post only true crime, both solved and unsolved videos. Thanks for watching on this one. See you on the next one. Bye for now.